What is the difference between scripted and declarative pipelines? This question gets asked a lot in the Jenkins community. What are the differences between scripted and declarative pipelines? We're going to take a look at a couple of examples showing those differences. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.346.2, and attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent. Down in the description of this video is a link to a sample repository. And let's take a look at that sample repository. We have two basic examples that we're going to be looking at. First off is basic, and then we're going to look at restart. Let's first take a look at basic. Now, if we take a look at Jenkins file scripted, this is a five line Jenkins file. We're going to say node, we're going to do a single stage, and we're going to use sh echo hello world. The variant of that for declarative looks very similar, but it's five lines longer. It has some more boilerplate like the opening and closing of the pipeline. Agent any is selecting the node that we want to use for our agent. And then we have some extra plumbing for the stages. But if you just take a look at the step, we're still running the same step. So in this case, scripted or declarative, the pipeline looks practically the same. And in fact, if we go take a look at the run of this job, what we can see with scripted, we can see it ran in about a second. And if we take a look at the console output, we can see that we're running on agent one. We have echo hello world and we're done. Now notice other than obtained the Jenkins file scripted from Git, this is about a 15, 20 line output. Now, again, let's go back over to the stage view and we have just a single stage. Let's go over to declarative. If we take a look at declarative, we actually have two stages. Now, if you think back to our declarative definition, we only see one stage. Well, what's this about? Well, if we take a look at the console output for this, notice it's a lot longer than scripted. And that's okay, it's not a big deal. But you'll notice here that there is a stage called declarative checkout SCM. By default, the very first stage is a checkout of the SCM. It's just built in. You get that for free by using declarative. Now, you can use an option to disable that, but again, by default, it automatically checks out the repository where you're running. So in this case, we added in a declarative checkout SCM just by default. So it does a checkout of the Git repository that we've defined. And then once we get down into the actual stage, which is right here that we wrote, then we see hello world. So that's a starting point of scripted versus declarative. But there are features that are declarative only that you cannot access inside of a scripted pipeline. One of those is the ability to restart from a stage. So let's go take a look at that example. We'll go back over to GitHub. Let's go over to our restart. Now, in this case, what we have is just three stages. So basically the exact same that we saw over in our basic example, but we've just added two more stages. If we take a look at declarative, it's a variation on a theme. We've just added in two new stages with two more SHs. But now let's go over and take a look at our jobs. So if we go back into our controller, click zero to restart, let's take a look at scripted. Again, we see that we have three stages, which is what we would expect. If we take a look at our output, we see three stages here. Again, nothing real surprising, but I want you to keep in mind what this left nav looks like. In fact, I'm gonna leave this here and I'm going to open up in a new tab, another window, and let's click into declarative and let's click into number one. Now we'll see here again, like we saw before. In fact, let's go back here. We see our three stages that we've defined, but then we also have this implicit stage that was added automatically for us for doing a checkout SCM. But if we go back into here, we'll see that we've got all these stages, but watch this. Notice what we have here. In fact, I'm going to pull this tab off. It's going to let me pull it off. There we go. Now that we've pulled that tab off, let's look at the differences. Everything looks almost the same. We can see that this is scripted up here and this is declarative. Status changes, console output, edit build information, delete. But then with declarative, we get a couple of extra side panel attributes. We get git build data, not a big deal, but we also get restart from stage. The restart from stage is only available when you're using declarative. So in case I wanted to restart from a stage, in this case, I want to restart from stage two and I click run. And what you're going to see as this runs is it goes ahead and skips the hello and picks right up at hello world two and onto hello world three, which if we take a look at the output, we just see stage two and stage three. So if being able to restart from a stage is something that you want, you don't have a choice. You have to use declarative pipeline. 
If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.